So in this video, you're gonna see me install PEX for my compressed air system. I guess I'll take you over and show you. Uh, I have I have one of these installed already. One of these adapters minus this air fitting. I installed that before I started making the video to make sure that what I was going to do was really going to work. So that is what my air adapters look like. So this air adapter gets threaded on here. And the sheetrock goes over all this and goes. And so what will be sticking out of the wall is just this air adapter. So I installed this stub out and the plan is to have the air compressor sitting here in the corner. Uh, there'll be a valve right there, there's another crap that'll plug into this line, this line goes up, it goes down and feeds that first air adapter. I'm going to try to talk and work at the same time to explain what I'm doing and to explain some of my thought processes behind using PEX and some other stuff. So anyway, let's get started on all of that. Um, so I am installing PEX for an air system. And I realize that there's a lot of people out there that think that's a really bad idea. And I would venture to say that a lot of those people are not familiar with PEX. Either A, they haven't used it, or they just don't understand how plastic works. You know what, there's a very lots of different reasons as to why, but what I'm getting at is there's a lot of people that have done tests of this stuff online, and they've mostly validated that it is more than capable of withstanding the 110 PSI that it'll see in this application. Oh, that's a bummer. I screwed that thing in. Just slightly too much to where I can't crimp it correctly. <laughs> of course. But anyway, like I was saying, I am using PEX. I watched a huge amount of videos on YouTube about it, how it works, and people that had done testing to it to validate that it would hold this type of pressure. I also realized that PEX is not designed for this. However, I'm going to use it. Because what I figured out was, I don't care if I have dropping pressure over a couple hours on an air system in my garage. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me if my air compressor might kick on once or twice extra in a day because of the dropping pressure. I'm going to install an isolation valve to isolate this from the compressor so the compressor won't kick on during the night, even though it's in my garage and it wouldn't matter. But in the big scheme of things, I already had PEX, a bunch of the blue and red stuff from a different part of my project. And I priced out a bunch of different air systems online, and this, the size of system that I'm running, was by far, I mean, I'm talking half as much. I think I've got $180 into this total so far, maybe $200. And an equivalent sized system with seven ports, seven, that's right, two in the ceiling, uh, three on this back wall, two in the front wall, would have been like three or four hundred dollars uh, if you would if I were to run the conventional system. The other thing is I did a really hard looking into how the conventional systems work, and they're not most of them, not all of them, are not rated to be inside of a wall. Whereas PEX it is ready to be inside of a wall. Now, I'm not in this circumstance, I believe this. But, I don't really care. <laughs> and I'm using it, and I think it's great stuff. Uh, I wonder if that's going to be well, it's not enough. That'd be cool if it was. from there to here. But, I have a whole bunch of this red crap left over. Let me get that out of the wall. 
all. That's pretty much gonna be garbage. I'll grab a different piece. If you choose to leave a comment down below, and oh my god, why did you use pets? Don't waste your time. It's installed. It's done. It works really well. It was significantly cheaper. And gosh darn it, I just like being different sometimes. Yes, I know it's not designed to be used for this, and I realize it's only rated for water, and so on and so forth, and lots of people have tested and proven that it'll work, and I'm using it, I think it's gonna be amazing. It's cheaper, it looks better, it's easy to install. Yeah, I explained enough of the fact that I don't need a bunch of comments down below telling me, oh my God, you shouldn't have done that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get moving on the rest of this stuff. I have the, uh, let's see, this is gonna be a half inch line that runs from here up into the overhead with the um, bandit, basically. Excuse me, a male air adapter that will plug into the air compressor. The main um, the supply lines all run. I decided not to run one out in the front of the garage. I have excess air spigots in this size of garage as it is. Six is more than enough for what I will ever need. Uh, it's convenience factor at this point. So my workbench will go along this entire wall. It'll actually stop right here. So I have one that'll be right at the end of the workbench. And another one on the other end, here. Um, I plan on putting an air dryer on the wall here to plug into because I'll have a sink here for water, so I was hoping that I'd be able to use this air to dry things off. Who knows what, all sorts of different stuff I've found. Having dry air is pretty handy. So, that is the plan so far. the last fitting I need to crimp on. This is the adapter to go to my air compressor. And I will go grab my air compressor and plug it in and show you guys what the pressure test looks like. I have the air system all installed. I am going to go ahead and, I only have my small air compressor here right now. I have a little Dewalt uh, envelope compressor. I'm gonna plug it in with the air hose and turn on the compressor and unfortunately I'll run that at fast speed for you guys to let the compressor spool up and I don't want to slam the system so I'm going to let the compressor build up pressure on the whole system and I'm going to go around and check for leaks. So let's see how it goes. So right now, I'm at 90 PSI, which is uh, quite a bit. And 
I don't hear any leaks currently, but I'm gonna go ahead and check some of these joints. So you can see that I have that pressure up to about 160 PSI, which is significantly higher than I would normally ever run anything. So my air PEX system is seeing 160 PSI. My compressor tank will eventually be sitting in this corner and charge the blue line, which is the header, which runs up into the ceiling, across my ceiling, T's up there to half inch PEX, runs down this wall, T's there to a manifold there, and runs across to a manifold down there. From there, that blue line comes out at a 90s, runs down to a T, which comes across to there, which will eventually have a reel, retractable reel plugged into it. And another one over here, which will also be a retractable reel. And then the red line runs down the front wall to here which I anticipate hanging some kind of small coiled up air hose here to pump up tires and other stuff. So I have six air manifolds, oh, excuse me, and that red line also tees directly from there, behind the wall, runs across here to there. That's on the side wall. So I just showed you the system and where all my connections are, and it's currently sitting at 160 PSI, which is pretty high. Um, I run my air tools normally between 90 and 110 max. I, I, I can't imagine I would ever need to go up to what it's currently at right now. Um, I don't hear any leaks at all. I, I don't have this. I was going to do the soap bubble check, but I don't want to go screw it because it's cold outside. <laughs> At 160 PSI, and I'm letting it kind of, I call it a soak, I'm gonna let it sit here for about 15 or 20 minutes before I take the pressure back down. Um, and then I'm gonna let it sit at uh, 110 overnight and check it tomorrow and see what the drop on that is. Overall, I'm happy with it, and it's cost me less to do it this way. And it also, I think in the long run, will look better. I won't have little manifolds, little goofy manifolds on my walls. I'll just have these little, these little stubs sticking out. A sheet rock will go right up against this. Uh, a lot of the systems have this aluminum block here. And I realize that some of the systems also have the little drains on the bottom for the, the condensation and moisture. Uh, I'll just end up plugging one of my valves, my little tester I showed you, right? I'll plug that in here and pull the trigger and let the moisture blow out of the line every once in a while. And it'll be more than, more than adequate for what I do with it. I anticipate that line filling up with water more than the other lines because of that vertical run, which is why I ran it up in the overhead how I did. I, I could have run from there straight across this line, but I wanted this vertical run, so if condensation built up in that line, it would ideally drip down to stay in this section here and not translate into the section of piping that I anticipate using more than this one over here. So there was some, some thought behind that. So that wraps up the uh, compressed air system install for my garage. If you have any questions or comments, um, by all means, uh, post them down below. Save me the hassle of listening to people who tell me that I shouldn't have done it with PEX. I did the research and clearly I put it under 160 PSI, so I think it'll be more than adequate for my, for my, uh, my usage. And uh, yeah, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.